Those who hunt by night will tell you that the wildest and most vicious of all animals is the tiny shrew. The shrew feeds only by the dark of the moon. He must eat his own body weight every few hours or starve. And the shrew devours everything, bones, flesh, marrow, everything. In March, first in Alaska, and then invading steadily southward, there were reports of a new species, the giant killer shrew. smell it, can't you? No, but I can feel it. The pressure's dropped so fast, it's almost made my ears pop. Hurricane's got different ways of telling you it's there. Where is it? Dead ahead. What's that mean to us? My boy, that puts our port right in the middle of it. There's a cove on the lee side, though. We'll snuggle up close to the bluff and ride it out. What about the bottom? Well, the chart shows it's good holding ground. It's clay. You know something? If this thing had an automatic pilot, I wouldn't have to put up with you. Then you wouldn't have nobody to chew out. We should be there in a couple of hours. These mills of yours keep running. Look, automatic pilots can't play Dixieland jazz on their engines like I can. Hey, Rook. Rook, come here. Take a look. There she is, dead ahead. Man, that sure do look good. Man named Craigus owns this island, doesn't he? That's the name on the crate, Dr. Milo Craigus. We'll unload tomorrow. I don't want this crap sitting high in that water when that blow hits. You gonna ride stern too with a lot of water under? That's right. That sea won't make up in that cold. That wind will have her whipping around like a kite. Slip forward and break out the heavy weather hook. Track it and make sure it's free to run. I'll mouse the shack. Good. Oh, she'll ride like a duck. If she swings too far to starboard, we might have to take a check line to shore. Hey, Rook, take a slant up that trail. Now, that's a rather strange setup, wouldn't you say? Like somebody's getting rid of somebody, huh, Captain? Maybe. Hard to tell. Dr. Craigus. Thorne Sherman. 
Have your supplies aboard. That's good. Nothing wrong with Captain Ferguson, I hope. Well, I wouldn't know. I just bought his run. Oh, I see. Were you able to fill our order? Everything on the list. Here's the manifest. Missing last week's supply has drawn us a little short, you know. Captain, after you have unloaded, I have a passenger for you. And? Captain Sherman, this is my daughter, Ann Craig. Hello. So you're the passenger? That's right, Captain. Oh, it's going to be nice having you aboard. I'm getting a little tired looking at Griswold. But we're, uh, we're not leaving today. In fact, we're not even unloading. That load will cut the roll in half. You expecting an invasion? Yes, animals. Game or otherwise? Under certain conditions, it could be dangerous. Hey, Rook, you want to shake the kinks out? Limber up a little? Not me, Captain Blight. You go right ahead and stretch your legs. That ship's gonna be bucking like a bucking bronc for long. Besides, I got some work left to do. If you do come ashore, wear a gun. Got you, Captain. When I told you about the hurricane, you act like you didn't know anything about it. What's the matter, your set broken down? You've been out of communication for more than a week, Captain. Can't it be fixed? It's totally out of commission. My assistant, Mr. Farrell, Jerry Farrell. Father, perhaps the captain would enjoy a drink. Well, of course. Will you join us in a cocktail? Well, I've never been known to turn down a drink yet. I'll be glad to accept it. Fine. In that case, we'll have martinis. Mario? Si, senor. Mix them, please. Right this way, Captain. Come in. self-sufficient here. We have cows for fresh milk and chickens for fresh eggs. We even have saddle horses. Sort of a world all your own. <laughs> it's exactly what I've tried to create. Well, to each his own. If you have to be isolated for your work, you've picked a lonely little island. Excuse me, please. I think I'll change. Which is a little... Worried because you aren't leaving until tomorrow. Oh, I can understand that. There's something else bothering her. Radford. Radford. Radford, would you please step over here? I'd like you to meet someone. Just a second, Doctor. Going on for hours. Dr. Bain. There's no need to shout, Doctor. I'm right here. I'd like you to meet Captain Thorne Sherman. This is my other assistant, Radford Bain. How do you do? Two new litters since lunch, Doctor. Both support GT-116. That's good. But uh... we can breed them to the 205 group in about three weeks. But I'd prefer to wait and expose about half of them to the Hoskins factor first. If you agree. Good idea. Do you know there's a hurricane coming? Well, I don't suppose there's much we can do about that. Glad to meet you. Sherman, wasn't it? You have to excuse Radford. 
Anything that does not concern his project and does not get through to him. Brilliant mind. <laughs> he would start at it if someone didn't remind him to eat. Must be very interesting work. What's his field? Biology. He specialized in genetics, heredity. I'm afraid my interest doesn't run in that line, you know. Uh... Think what would happen if you could isolate and identify the inherited fact in each gene. Now, wait a minute. I'm afraid I'm not very good with pure research. This is practical research. Generally among mammals, the smaller the size, the higher the metabolism and shorter the lifespan. Is that right? Well, I'm attempting to, to decrease the size while maintaining a low metabolism and resultant a longer lifespan. For what reason? Overpopulation. Not a problem now, but it will be in time. If we were half as big as we are now, we could live twice as long in our natural resources. Father, may I speak with you a moment? Will you please excuse us, Captain? Well, providing you drop the Captain, I prefer a thorn. No. No. Tell me something, Doctor. Has a hurricane ever hit this island before that you know of? I wouldn't know. <laughs> You've only been here nine months and this place has been unoccupied for years. Well, have you ever been through one? Only the fringes. Well, this one's building up very fast. Pressure drops very quickly in the center. I'd advise you to get some doors and windows open in this place. <laughs> Ventilators on the roof. And if you'll freshen Anne's drink, I'll go and check them. I'd be happy to. Thank heavens, you're right today. Why, our ration's getting short? Oh, it's more than that. Much more. We'll surely be able to sail tomorrow, won't we? Possibly. But not probable. Not too late, anyway. It takes a long time for a sea like that to quiet down. Well, if you're worrying about me, you needn't. I'm a good sailor. Oh, I'm not worried about you. We'll sail when the time's right. Got them opened, all right. Oh, Captain? Let me freshen you a drink. One for the road. I'm trying to rush you, but uh, it will be dark soon. I've invited Thorne for dinner, Father. Oh, I see. If you're not worried about your ship, you're welcome. I'll take a rain check on that dinner. If you wish. Father, I've asked Thorne to stay. Progress, Doctor. This is the sole survivor of group 30. 28 months old today. Well, that's equivalent to 140 years to us. That's right, yet it still maintains low metabolism without any sluggishness. Not the breakthrough, but it certainly sets our course. Radford, suspend series 52 through uh, 96, and we'll concentrate on the rest. What is that? It's a Sorex sericidae. Looks like a small rat. Smells like a skunk. <laughs> they have musk glands in their knees. These little fellows are our subjects. They have a birth cycle of 10 to 14 days. And using them, we can establish traits. We can trace the progressions through a number of generations over a short period of time. Well, how big do they get? That's an adult. See, the muzzle is longer and thicker than the rats. It extends over the lower mandible, see? Does he bite? Only when he's hungry. Well, maybe you better take him. He doesn't know me. All he knows is his next meal. <laughs> uh, he's just been fed. He'll be all right for another eight hours. The shutter blew open. Bradford? I got it, senor. Let that scare you? It's gonna get worse. Storms always frighten her, ever since she was a child. They are not climbers. They are digging animals, a lot like the mole. They feed only at night unless they're starving. And when they are hungry enough, they They'll tackle anything, regardless of size. Are you kidding me? Hmm? 
you leave two of them in a cage for 12 hours without food, <laughs> the stronger will eat the weaker. Like cannibals. <laughs> Precisely. You see, their intense activity requires a tremendous amount of energy. To supply, they, they must eat three times own weight in food every 24 hours or starve. <laughs> Radford, Radford, would you please take it? Take it. Yeah. <laughs> Some call them bone eaters. When the flesh is gone, they'll eat the bones for marrow. All they'll leave are teeth, bones, I could use another martini. Do you mind? Of course, my dear. I'll get you one. Huh? Mario! Mario! A keep off of all. Mario will show to the bath, he'll freshen up a bit. Uh, ye be el señor al baño. Si, señor. Sígame, por favor. Excuse me. Aquí, señor. You got a problem, too? Que paso? Nada. Nothing, senor. But you will leave on the ship tomorrow. Well, I think that all depends on the wind and the sea, don't you? Si. Si, senor. I don't know. Ah, you may joke him. <laughs> I feel the point. I see. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Now, if anybody else is concerned about my sailing tomorrow, why, you see, they feel the point too, huh? I don't like to repeat myself. Okay, senor. But I'm not saying that you created them, Jerry. I am saying that because of your drunken stupidity in leaving the cage door open, you created the horrible situation that now exists. Look, Ann, this is a mistake any one of us might have made. I'm getting a little sick of being called an irresponsible drunk. Now, believe me, I am. Excuse me. Care for a cigarette? Thanks. And thank heavens you arrived today. You said that before. What's the strain? I don't understand. Please excuse me. But it seems like everything is coming to a head at once. I want to leave, but I want my father to go with me. Well, then, why doesn't he? We discussed it many times, but he's adamant. I'm sure Jerry has a lot to do with this decision. You tried to convince me that the crisis will only last for a few... Well, this is certainly a cozy little scene. Might even be called intimate. Boy meets girl Stop and Stop it, Jerry. That remark is uncalled for. What I do or have to say does not concern you. I can't disagree with you more, my dear. I'm concerned with everything you do, and I intend to keep it that way. Now, in my book, an engagement isn't a casual in thing. In my book, it isn't either. And last night ended ours.
Everybody in the world is scared to death of something. That's evident. When they came at us last night, you knocked me down getting inside the fence. It's just that I can't stand them. And I've discovered something I can't stand. All right. But I advise you not to mention it to anyone. I'm going to complete these experiments with your father regardless of anything. Do you understand that? Nobody is going to take this chance away from me. That's Captain Sherman. Checking the weather. I'll get him. Captain, time for dinner. Stay. You mean if one of those trees crashes through, it might just knock the whole... Any tree on this side of the house will fall away from it, so just relax. But I think I'd better go back aboard. I don't think I'm not grateful for your hospitality. I am. I'll see you tomorrow. Thorn, your ship is safe. Please, stay here with me. Why? You scared or lonesome? Both. I'll take a rain check on it. Thorn, you can't leave. No one opens that gate after dark. Well, who's going to stop me? You? Well, this. No one opens that gate at night. Now, look, I don't ask questions because it's against my principles. Wouldn't you like to explain that? All right. Sit down and I will. Give me the gun. Not very becoming, anyway. You believe in fairy tales? Well, I'm a little old for that sort of thing, but uh, what'd you have in mind? Well, I'll tell you about one. A true fairy tale. And you're right in the middle of it. Oh? Have you ever heard of a shrew? As in taming no, of the... No, the animal. Radford called them Soric Sericity when you showed you one. Oh, then shrew must be the common name for those cute little animals. Cute? That's the last word you can use to describe those little monsters. They're the most horrible animals on the face of the earth. As father told you, they breed within three weeks after birth. Their lifespan yeah, is around yeah, one year. I know what your father told me, but what's that got to do with me opening that gate? There are two or three hundred giant shrews out there. Monsters weighing between 50 and 100 pounds. 50 to 100? Wait a minute, you must be kidding. I'm definitely not kidding. That's as big as a full-grown wolf. And what's more, they are beginning to starve. No wonder you didn't want me to go out there. Thanks for saving my skin. Well, I'm sorry I had to threaten you with a gun. But I didn't know how else to stop you. Well, it was very effective. But all you had to do was tell me about them. Well, I hoped I wouldn't have to. But you changed everything when you started to leave. And I had to stop you some way. You say there's two or three hundred out there? Dan! That's right, Captain Thorne. And if you'd stuck with your rowboat and played captain instead of trying to play detective, you wouldn't have to worry about how many are out there, would you? That's enough, Jerry. What's wrong, Ann? Thorne decided to leave. To dissuade him, I started to tell him about the shoes. You might as well know the whole story, as half of it. I guess we're all a little jumpy, Captain. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Six months ago, we managed to isolate the pack to control in size. Two litters were born. 
Six individuals to get the study. They were about the size of buckshot at birth. But the rate of growth was abnormal. They continued to grow. They were mutants. But they inherited all the negative characteristics of their breed. Somehow they managed to escape. <laughs> but a month later, we saw one of the offspring. They were multiplying. We did everything in the world to exterminate them, but <laughs> no apparent luck. Then we haven't seen any. Since daylight neither blinds them and they, they forage only at night, when they're starving. But the fact that two of them charged Anne and Jerry at the gate last evening indicates that the available food on the island is nearing depletion. Then what, Doctor? They will exterminate each other. It will take a couple days. What do we do during that time? Stay indoors and wait until it's over. Oh, get some wires glued down on the transformer. I'm sorry. I'll get some lamps. Mario! Mario! Si, senor. There's a lantern in the pantry. Light it and bring it in here. Bradford, light all the candles you can find. All right, I will. Where's the generator? Outside. Can't get at it at night. Here, let me help you. The lantern will give you all the light you need. I will join you shortly, Jerry. Well, Jerry, I felt she was sincere and made sense from her standpoint. Wanting her father to leave the island with her makes sense? be much better for the project if I went with her for a few days. As a matter of fact, I think I'll talk to the doctor about that. That might be the answer. And another thing, I don't take much to this Thorne Sherman. He looks to me like the type that'd try anything. That left-handed dinner invitation, that was just to keep me here till after dark, wasn't it? I wanted you here tonight. I thought something terrible was going to happen. Well, you still feel the same way about it? Not as much. Not since you're here. I know everything. <laughs> It's a lonesome sound, doesn't it? Sure does. Like in Sweden, we don't have a wind this strong. You're a strange man, Thorn. I never met anyone like you. Oh? You seem so disinterested in everything. Aren't you the least bit curious? Don't you wonder about the unusual things around here? The guns, the fence, the shattered windows, my accent, anything? I'll tell you something. I'm only interested in anything that concerns me, then I do something about it. <laughs> You're going to sail with me tomorrow, whether your father intends to or not. Somebody needed it. Did you hear it, Doctor? It sound like a human voice. I was thinking a rook. It was the livestock. The shoes got into the barn. What was it, Father? The livestock. 
Did Mario forget to bar those doors? No. I put them in the barn myself. They couldn't get through the wood doors. They dug through the dirt floor. Let me ask you something, Doctor. How could you expose all our lives, yourself included, with those things out there? All you had to do was get the Coast Guard or the Navy to come in here and burn them out. Those things got loose. Any unusual experiment can produce unusual results. That's why I chose this island. It's isolated. Miles of open water in any direction. Our project is privately financed. It's not a problem for the government or military. The world is in no danger. This species does not swim. <laughs> and as far as the shrews are concerned, this island is their world. Very soon, right here on this island, is going to be a miniature reproduction of an overpopulated world. And you'll see the importance of what we're working to avoid. I'm not concerned about all this theory. What I'm concerned about is our lives. There'll be ample time to panic when they run out of food and go on a 24-hour forage. How do you know they haven't already? That's possible. Their main diet has been the small animals on the island. That source could have been depleted 18 or 20 hours ago. And that's why they went after the livestock. There's still some food on this island before they reach the crisis. Where? <laughs> no worry about them digging in here. <laughs> the floors are tiled. But the walls aren't, Doctor. They're adobe. Our safest bet would be on that boat. You may be right. You can reach your boat in daylight. The shrews will gorge themselves on livestock. That should keep them lethargy for several hours. There's no sense looking at the dark side. And there's no sense minimizing a serious situation. It leaves you completely unprepared to cope with it. Well, we certainly can't make it tonight. That's out of the question. Maybe tomorrow. I haven't. We'll get some sleep tonight, but we'll have a watch, an hour and a half apiece. Doctor, you go first, and then Radford, Mario, Jerry, and then me. Shutter all the windows, make sure they're locked good and tight, check all these walls. Come on. No, I think I'll stay here by the fire. I feel safer. I couldn't stand it in that room alone. All right, as you wish. But try to get some sleep. Farrell, here is Mario. You are next to make the patrol, no? Uh, sure, Mario. Come on in. I've been, been waiting for you to finish. I must have dozed off. You kind of startled me. Sit down. Here. Have a drink. It will help you to relax. Gracias, señor. Sit down. Just a while. You just checked every room in the house, didn't you? See. Si. Why? You're a good man, Mario. A man that can be trusted. <laughs> Imagine a intelligent girl like her going for a common sea tramp like him. I know why. You do too. In case anything goes wrong, she's looking out for her own hide. That's why I keep thinking about you and me. Anything goes wrong, 
We're going to outlast them all. I'm going to trust you to take my turn at patrolling the house. But when you finish, don't wake the captain. Come back here and get me. Yeah, I'll probably feel good enough by then to take his turn. Okay, Maria? Safe. Okay. It is Mario. Oh, Mario, come on in. What is it? There is a big raton in the bodega. True, in the cellar? Si, I hear him singing down there. Well, how did he get in? The store broke out the kitchen window, but I closed it off. He went down there. Why should he go down there? The food for the little ratones. I pour it out to him frost. They love it. Did you tell Jerry? No, senor. Here is your turn next. Here is una luz. We kill him, no? Anybody open that door till I tell you to. You understand? Good girl. Okay. Open it just a crack. Open. Hold on to it. Okay. You all right down there? 
Doctor, get down here, quick! He's dead. Dead? I got this on him right away. He couldn't have bled to death. Might as well let go of it. Won't do him any good now. What could have killed him? I'm not certain. Till the autopsy. Hematoxic syndrome. I'm, I'm afraid so. We'll know after pathology. Doctor, that's not the same animal you showed me. That's a monster. As I said, they are mutants. In controlling the size factor, we seem to have crossed some of the other characteristics. Well, you certainly did a good job of it. I've known that for some time, Captain. Please give me a hand with Mario. Bradford, bring up the animal. Extremely high poison content in the shrew's saliva. Now compare it with this. Careful count isn't necessary. Any indication of the same poison in Mario's blood will give you the answer. Yes, you're right. <clears throat> Look, Ann. Brooding about it's not going to do any good. Now, why don't you try to think of something else? Uh, tell me, uh, what do you do around here? Are, are you a scientist? I'm a zoologist. Oh. That's the uh, study of animal life, isn't it? Well, do you specialize? What do you specialize in? Their diet. Well, I had a hand in this, too. And I'm partly to blame. But this ends it. If we ever get off this island, I'll never have anything to do with it again. What will you do? Live normally, like normal women do. I mean, you see, it seem a little dull after the life I've been living. I'd rather dull and alive than excited and... I'll take a dull, alive woman every time. Say, Thorne. Autopsy has proved what we suspected. Several weeks ago, I concocted the most virulent poison I could with the materials I had at hand. And we put it out as bait. Mario was killed by poison. Doctor, I wonder if you thought the system of the Sorex enabled them to assimilate that poison. It remained in the salivary glands of their jaws. Isn't that wonderful? I am sorry. Of course, I always speak from the clinical point of view. Well, don't you have something to counteract that poison? Once Maria was bitten, I'm afraid there's nothing anyone could have done. This indicates that they cannot afford to get even so much as a scratch from these animals. They are more poisonous than snakes. Well, do you think they're all affected? Best way to find out is let them all bite you and see which bite you die after. We might just all get that chance, Jerry. You included. Doctor, I've closed all the doors in the house. I suggest we do the same thing with this hall and this lab. Cut down the chances of getting in the front of the house. I think if we keep a close watch on those walls and windows in there, we might make it till daybreak. 
The walls are two feet thick, do you? Do you think they have a chance to dig in? Of course there's a chance. Anywhere that plaster's off, that adobe's as soft as mush where that rain hit it. Here's another possibility, Doctor. It's very light out. It's going to be daylight soon. We'll take the shrew that killed Mario and throw it over the fence and use it for bait. Mm -hmm. If they uh, show up for it, of course, they'll run for the boats out. But if they don't, then I'll go down and have Rook lay to with a lighter. Then I'll return to the bend and the trail and give you the all-clear signal. Sounds fine, Captain. Good. Then you explain it to the rest. Yes, I will. Well, the bait's been out for 20 minutes. Nothing's touched it. Down. Isn't that wonderful? I'm afraid it's not over, my dear. It's just a low. There'll be a lot more. He's right. I'll be back at the bend shortly. Now you watch for my signal. Hmm? You can't go alone. I'll go with him. Not you, Father. You haven't even fired a gun. Take Brad or Jerry. Sure, I'll go. Then you'll be sure of getting a signal. <laughs> shoot that gun unless you have to. We've only got 20 rounds all together. I know that as well as you do. Sherman, you stay away from her. You have that gun pointed at me? Right at the middle of your back. Look, we got enough problems without worrying about Ann. I'm telling you, stay away from her, or when the shrews get through with you, they won't even find the buckshot. <laughs> Check line. I gotta find him. Since last night, you won't find much of him. Will you shut up? I'm not going back. For what? I'm staying here. All right. You suit yourself, but if I were you, I'd swim out to that boat. Can't swim. Then stay here. Wait a minute. You gotta give me a gun. Give you a gun? 
chairman, wait! This is the gun we had on the boat. They don't leave much, do they? Sherman, we gotta make a deal for us. What is it? Shh. They've been trailing us on both sides. Where? I didn't see anything. Look, Sherman, you gotta give me a gun. Whatever you do, don't you run. And you stay in front of me, because I don't trust you. Didn't he have it coming, or didn't he? What happened out there? Oh, nothing much. Jerry just tried to kill me twice in the last five minutes. Brooke came ashore last night. He's dead. This all was left. Won't do us any good. It's got no ammo. I'm deeply sorry, Captain. I wish I'd followed your orders. But, Doctor, you casually mentioned animals. You didn't explain to us what we were facing out there. You have every right to feel the way you do. My mistake was only mine. It was one of judgment. I didn't know about the hurricane. I didn't anticipate the effect it would have on the shrews. I thought the house would be safe through the crisis. How, how could you expose your own daughter? How could you expose Anne to that? <laughs> she was going to leave last week, but the boat didn't come. There's a drink.
Anybody else care for one? I could use some coffee. I'll make some. Thank, Thank you, Madame. Creamy sugar. <laughs> Slam the door! You all right, Doctor? He just ripped my trousers, that's all. Are you sure that's all? I'm, I'm completely aware of it, Doctor. A stupid waste of ammunition. Every one of them a clean mess. There's still four of them in there. How did they get in? Through that kitchen window. That rope must be rotten. <laughs> it got him! Bradford! <laughs> He's dead. Oh, no! Every symptom and reaction, right up to the moment of his death. Jerry, tear down one of those drapes and cover him up. <laughs> sure, sure. Craig is so cover Ann, and I'll cover him. You'll cover me, but who'll cover you? Shut up! We can get on that man old sway for the shit. Shut up! Now oh, you stop sniffling and think! <laughs> It'll take a time to get us out of here! <laughs> Take them all to dig around this? You're right. No telling where else they're digging, too. Some of those crates up over there. That roots our last chance. Here, help me, Doctor. Oh. Yeah, see if you can find something light. Uh, all right. <laughs> drums as, as tanks, <coughs> individual tanks. Here, I'll show you. All right. Stand down here. Yep. Let it down now. All right. Slow. All right. Are you all right? Yeah. Uh, Hold it here, make some high pieces. Get us some tools of our damn it's all right.
soon. 
Swim for it. Okay. We are next on the boat, we are safe, aren't we? I mean, the storm. Oh, sure. She rode out the first half all right, and that's always the roughest. Anyway, riding an anchor, I'll get a chance to learn a little more about that Swedish accent. In 24 hours, there'll be one shrew left on the island, and he'll be dead of starvation. An excellent example of overpopulation. Well, you know something, Doctor? What's that? I'm not going to worry about overpopulation just yet. Mm -hmm. 